But here's my real argument with your book. The thing that really stunned me, actually. I like John Boehner. He's a, he's a man from Ohio. He grew up in tough circumstances. He's an Irish cat. I like him a lot. I've, I've known Kevin McCarthy for 25 years. I like him a lot. But the House leadership in the last 18 months, you write about John. One thing I like about John is he always speaks his mind. You know where he stands and what he thinks. John Boehner, Eric Cantor, Kevin McCarthy, despite a combined 100 invitations, not one of them has appeared on this show in the yeah, last two years. I don't understand years. that. That puzzles me. I don't. Kevin doesn't come on either? No, none of them. And they don't go anywhere. They don't talk to Levin. They don't show up with Laura Ingram. That's why Eric Cantor got beat. Yeah, I don't get that. Um, I don't have a good answer for you. I wish I did. Sorry. Okay, so so that, that leads me to leadership in the House. I have been told that the Speaker wasn't going to stand for re-election, but now that the majority leader was defeated, and he's been replaced by Kevin McCarthy, he doesn't think there's anyone but you who can run the House. I know. I agree with Everybody. him. Everybody says that. Uh, look, I, I, I make my decisions on uh, what I feel is right for me and my family. Um, that's a job where you're expected to travel all weekends. Uh, my kids are 9, 11, and 12 years old. I'm doing Cub Scouts, cross country, soccer, mass with my family. And I'm just not going to spend my weekends away from my. I just, it's just that simple. Can I put it? Um, can I put it in tough and, terms, Chair? I prefer being a policy chairman. I prefer being a committee chairman, writing the policy. Which is got, which is very important. It's got to get done right, and it's one where I can have good balance uh, in our in our lives. Okay, now this is going to sound harsh, but but I don't mean it to be. I just mean it to be emphatic. I think you'd be the best speaker. There are lots of men and women who have been deployed six, seven, and eight times. Uh, you're right about that, and and I I don't hold the candle to those people, and I can't even put myself in the same sentence. I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't even suggest that. Um, it's just a job that I I I've been broached with a number of times. And I have, you know, on each of these times, um, concluded I prefer being a policy chairman. Um, and and it's not as if I don't have sway with leadership on, on the policy decisions we make. I have tremendous sway, and I and, and, and I appreciate having that. Um, but as far as being in that elected leadership position um, and uh, not seeing your kids as much. And look, I, I thank God for the men and women who put on the uniform and keep us safe. I've got a lot of friends. I've got some friends who are over there right now. Well, then how about Jeb Henseling is, is mentioned well in this book. Jeb's wrong on XM as well, uh, but he'd be a better speaker. <laughs> you're listening to John Campbell, who I love, by the way, uh, but you're listening to him too much on that one. No, no, no. It's our defense industrial base. We've got to keep Boeing. You know, there's a long okay. argument there, but, but, right. but Jeb Henseling would be a better speaker than the speaker. Uh, can you... I'm not going to get into the personality conflicts. Jeb, as you probably know, is my best friend in Congress, but um. Uh, I'm not going to get into that. Is, there a, is, is it a good idea for the Republicans to delay the vote long enough after the new Congress for there to be a healthy discussion about who ought to be the speaker and the leader? We'll cross the bridge when we get to it. I'm not going to weigh into that.